how to build a rainwater tank stand out of two treated pine sleepers. Now this basic design can actually, you can make a little stool out of it, you can make a tank stand out of it, you can make a table out of it. Um, very, very universal little design and very cheap. I use two of these 200 by 75 by 2.4 uh, meter um, treated pine sleepers. And uh, the legs I made were about 550 mil long. So I cut two legs out of 550 mil and the centerpiece that was left uh, was the base. And I made two of those side by side, uh, which the tanks then sat on. The tanks that I chose were uh, these Maze brand 300 liter tanks. Uh, and they've got a rectangle base and they were very cheap for the size that you got. Uh, this actual job was on a chicken coop. It was out uh, in, a, in, a, in a paddock or a field. So uh, it was a long way for them to be carrying water. So they wanted to catch the water off the roof and um, have water at that spot on their property, as well as have um, permanent water set up for the chickens. So uh, this um, stand I've done before uh, on a property and I actually used it on a round 1000 litre tank using the same size treated pine sleepers. And uh, that was on my own property and that I had for about seven years and it was still absolutely perfect. The huge advantage with treated pine is that it doesn't um, rot um, it stays nice and strong, it keeps its shape. So I've had one of these uh, in for about seven years with a thousand litres sitting on it. So I knew that this guy here with 600 litres on it would be plenty strong enough. Okay, the site. 600 litres weighs 600 kilograms uh, plus the weight of the stand. So it's going to be pretty heavy. So you need um, a good solid base to what this sits on. So the dig was very easy. I actually just scraped that out with a shovel uh, down to a nice stony hard layer. Um, just using standard tools, just scraping it out with a shovel. But what I wanted was that where the um, feet were going to go um, to be about the same height on both sides. Now, you can actually build a slope into this stool. As long as you get the legs flat, if it's down a hill, you can um, cut your legs different lengths and um, keep the base level. It, it's absolutely imperative when you get the base on that the tank sits on, or it has to be level with that much weight. You can't have it crooked, so you will need a spirit level to do this job. Right, the legs, they don't actually look the same length in this shot, but they are, that one's just sitting a little bit um, closer. Uh, so I had four legs cut to this length, ready to go. And um, what I need to do now is um, actually get some concrete into the uh, bottom of these holes to make a firm base. I just bought some quick set concrete. You can get this in all of your hardware stores, pretty much anywhere. Um, it has an aggregate, it's got the stones, the concrete, bit of sand, everything all in there. So you can just chuck it in the holes and add water, mix it around with your shovel, and it sets hard as concrete. It is concrete, it'll set like concrete. Um, not so much um, having to hold the legs in place as what you are putting a solid base underneath. So I tipped the uh, concrete into the holes uh, and then added water, gave it a mix around with the shovel, gave it a good mix so that it was all um, properly mixed through. and. Uh, you don't need that much water, but it's okay if you do have a little bit, it sort of like settles down is what you'll find. And um, and then started the process of uh, getting the legs in. And then there's this is where you have to fiddle and muck and get things right, and measuring out from the shed and measuring the distance between the poles and getting your spirit level on and um, getting it level. Each of the four posts have to be vertical, coming straight up, um, and the same space out from the shed. I mean. I'm doing a job for someone else getting paid for it. I want to do a really good job, so I make sure everything's really spot on and level, and that's really the difference, even for a do-it-yourselfer. Um, it'll look really good if you take that extra time. You don't want to concrete the legs in, you know, crooked or different spacings or things like that. So take the time, get them straight, uh, and then right at the end, I just sat the legs onto the top and checked the level uh, to make sure that it was exactly what we were wanting. I then left the job. Uh, left it overnight because I wanted that concrete to set for the legs to be nice and strong uh, and then it was just a matter of screwing uh, the uh, top onto the uh, legs just pre-drilling um, the holes right through and then countersinking the top so that these um, screws can go down below the level they won't ever snag on the tank or, or get involved in that and you can see at this point how this can be a bench a seat you can sit on uh, it can be a tank stand like I've made you could put them right together and make a table, just or a pot stand. You could sit pots on it. There's so many things you could do. It's just a really strong, sturdy little stool. Then that part of the build is done. It's time for the tanks. 
So I lifted the two tanks into place. Now, when you're having two tanks, I've actually got these two tanks operating as one. So uh, you need to put a joiner between the tanks. Uh, and this way you can just have the water flowing into one and flowing out of either one. They just operate as one tank. As long as they're not airtight, um, the water will just pass through that bottom uh, fitting. And then, so you just drop the water in. That's gonna be different for each application and each house. But here, I've just used a 90 mil um, stormwater pipe, uh, not a, you know, a spouting pipe. I've dropped it off the drop of the spout and into the top of the tank. I just cut a hole uh, in the top to get that to place. And there you are, two tanks in place, looking really, really neat. You can see on the bottom there, I've also put, there's a tap. The white tap is the one that came with the tank for um, just filling a bucket or whatever water needs there are. And then the other one on the side, I ran a pipe down to an auto fill trough so that the chickens have got permanent water. Um, that'll stay nice and full from the rainwater. So there you go, great job.